nursing homes and hospitals training. Uh, I'm finding more and more at my local nursing homes that the principal is not able to sign. So this is where I'm going to tell you, Crystal, have you read your handbook? So first I'm going to say is to read your handbook. The second thing is going to say, read your state law. So most states have legislation around what to do if a signer cannot sign. OK, every state is different. Most of them have the same kind of rounds about. But you have to read your state law so that, you know, um, it's not new um, knowledge that it's not like a new thing that people can't sign their names. That's been an issue for probably the beginning of time since people started writing. So to, for me to say for what I'm trying to say is that there are laws in place. I'd be surprised if a state didn't have a law in place for how to handle um signatures for people who cannot sign. Some people don't have hands. People are just sick. They can't sign, you know, whatever the case is. So there usually is legislation for that. So what I want you to do, Crystal, is I want you to go first to your notorial handbook and see if the law is in there. For example, in Florida, it's right in the handbook what you do with someone who can't actually physically sign. In Virginia, it's not in our handbook, but it is in our state code. OK, so that's why I say you have two places to look. First, you're going to look in your handbook for your state and then you're going to go online and you're going to look online in your state code, the actual law to find what you're supposed to do when a person cannot sign. OK, um, that's going to tell you what to need, you need to do next. So some states, for example, they have it where the person just has to give verbal authorization for someone else to sign for them. So they give verbal authorization to the notary that this person is going to sign for me. So some states have that. Some states will say, yes, you can do that, but we need to put these extra words or um, clauses after on the notarial section. Some states allow for the notary to sign for that person with verbal authorization with extra notes on that notarization. So it just depends on what the state code allows as far as how you handle that okay um yeah so let's get into it so we're going to talk about nursing homes and hospitals and why you should be marketing to them what they're looking for and how to generate revenue with those entities okay so nursing homes and hospitals primarily you're going to be executing wills power of attorneys and medical directives okay so a will is basically where a person is completing documentation saying how they want their affairs handled in event of passing. Um, when a person dies with a will, it's called testate. When a person dies without a will, it's called intestate. Let me make sure that I uh, said that right. So basically what I remember is like, if you have a will, you testified what you want. If you don't have a will, then it's like you didn't testify. Yes, yeah, so if you don't have a will, it's intestate. If you have a will, it's called testate. Okay, and so you want to always have a will because if the person does not have a will, um, they and they have assets and they have people that need things or whatever the case is, they have to go to probate court. Also, when you don't have a will slash trust, and they're gonna get into taxes, you have to pay certain fees to pass things down. It just gets ridiculous. Now, you also have to pay to go to probate court. So a lot of people say always get a trust or get like, make sure you at least have a will. Um, but when you go to probate court, so let's say for example, as a notary, you can be um, you can be summoned to court whenever you notarize a document, especially if it's contested, because what happens is if you're summoned to court, they want to justify, okay, you saw the, this person sign this, you know, confirm your journal entry, yada, yada, yada. Um, so yeah, so people with wills, People are usually getting wills notarized. Now, the other thing too, the laws for wills vary state to state. You should be familiar with them just to be that extra above and knowledgeable notary. So um, for example, in Virginia, um, wills by law require two witnesses and a notary. And there also is a oath that is administered and verbiage that is required by law to be said. Now, keep in mind, most people don't do that. So that's why I like to say you should know your law. So there are lots of laws on the books across the country. And when a law is, when a law is written into code, 
it's not taken out until another law is written to take it out or to change that law. So there are plenty of laws across the country that are old, that are like outdated. Like it's like, what is this, right? Um, however, when it comes to wills, you want to know what the law requires for your estate. So for example, in Virginia, like I said, it requires two witnesses and a notarization and a oath to be issued. And there's certain verbiage that needs to be read um, for a correctly administered will. Now, when people don't do that, it doesn't mean the will is not valid. It's still valid. Most are just still they honor it. But if anything is not as per law, then at that point, it's up to the judge in probate court to decide how to handle it. Okay. Um, but that's why I tell everybody to, to um, read your state code. Another law in Virginia, for example, is that um, if you're not a licensed attorney, you're not allowed to draft wills for people and charge a fee. So if you did it for free, if you charge a fee, you have to be a licensed attorney. And this is why I go into my state code site so I can read law relevant to my industry so I'm familiar with it. Okay. So I always say you start off reading your handbook and then you read your code. Okay. So here's all the code that is about notary, but what I would do is take time and read all of these. So you guys have lots of code here. And it's basically gonna pull up most of the codes that, so credible witness is an individual who appears before a notarial officer, swears or affirms the signer of a document as the individual the signer claims to be, and is known person to the signer of the document. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I'm trying to think of this. So this is pretty good, actually. So when you see something says repealed, that means they've taken it away. So there were previous codes that have been repealed. Um, and that's what you want to make sure you're looking at the law. Some things do get changed. So first thing I would do is look at a trustee may not receive a fee for performing a notarial act. Fun fact. Look at that. Um, So I would start here. Tons of law here for you to read if you're in Indiana. Okay, the next thing I would do, I'm just looking at a bunch of this stuff. Okay, so here, you see how it goes to the practice of law and it's not really notary, but I would still read it because it's, it's just at this point start showing you things that have the word notary in it. Okay, so this is gonna talk about practice of law by attorneys. You wanna read it. Anything that has to do with notaries, the legal fields, you wanna read it. Um, let's see. Can you list the steps after being commissioned? We'll be working from home. So I recommend getting in the ultimate notary training, okay? Because there's no way I can tell you every single thing that you need to do. So I recommend that you get into the ultimate notary training at notarytonotary.com. I'll put the link in here. Um, make sure you use that promo code lucky when you do it, and it's going to walk you through step by step so you know exactly what to do what to buy if you need to buy anything so you're not wasting money and, and getting something that you don't need okay get the ultimate notary training if you're not going to do e-notary just get the notary signing agent course that will walk you through step by step what you need to do to start making money now the notary signing agent training is going to give you um what to do to get started it goes over general notary work and loan closing the ultimate also includes um what am i saying um, tax financial management and e-notary. Okay, but that's where you want to go. But congratulations on getting your commission. The very next thing you need to do is set your business goals. So like, what do you want to do um, with your business? What is your plan? Okay, you don't want to just shoot for this, like just throw things around and see what happens. You want to be intentional with what you want to do. Definitely get her book too. I like it. Um, the book is also on there. You can grab it right on your, add it to your student dashboard. When you click that link, it'll let you add it on. Um, and it'll walk you through how to make $1,000 a week as a notary public. Um, but yeah, the very first thing I have everybody to do is like set your intention. Like, what do you want this to do? Like, be intentional. Let's not run around with a chicken like a head cut off. What is your plan? Okay. Um, I will say like, you can definitely do it. It's not, it's not something that I would say is a hard business. It's something that I say is just learning it. You know, learning how to, guess what? Side note, um, I was thinking about going to New York for a, a while. Um, so I need to take care of my dad's out there. So I was going to go out there. But I was like, 
Maybe I got my commission in New York too. And when I'm out there, you know how I did in Florida. So whenever I go to Florida, I'm like doing nerdy work out there. I said, I'm going to go to New York. And uh, when I, and then like, and do a whole thing. Like, all right, guys, watch me make $1,000 in New York too. Uh, and I was thinking about, I haven't decided. It really depends if I'm going to go up there. Now that the weather's broken, I might do it. Because the, this really the, the only, like the main thing I always say is the same principles. It doesn't matter where I go, I do the same thing. So when I was here, I did that in Virginia. When I went to Florida, the same thing in Florida. And when I go to New York, I'm doing the same thing in New York. You know what I said I was going to do? I said, I'm going to do New York. Then I was going to do Texas. And I'm going to do California. Because it really doesn't matter. It's the same process. It's just learning the process. You learn the process, you can implement it anywhere. Okay? Different things have different little extra like rules and stuff. But it's the same process that you're going to implement everywhere. Um, so... Definitely set your intention. So really quick, everybody, just put in the chat, what is your goal for this week monetarily? So how much are you planning to make this week? I'm going to tell you guys mine, and then we'll go from there. So um, on average now, I'm doing anywhere between two to four closings a day, um, typically about two to three e-notaries a week. And general notary work is that, you know, it's just they come in here all the time because I have the, the business center. So I don't really count that anymore. They just walk in. Um, the ones that I go to, I don't really go anymore to general notary work, but I'll send people out to go do it. So I don't really count that. I pretty much just count loan closings. I count inspections and I count e-notary. So I will say with me doing, let's just say I do two. Let's say I do two a day, Monday through Friday. That'll make me about $1,000 for the week. If I did four, that's 400 times five is 2,000. Is that right? 2,000 for the week. Um, hold on. Let me show you my math right. 400 times five is 2,000 for the week. Um, so that's my goal. My goal is to do, and I, I primarily just like loan closings. That's where I kind of focus. And then, so let's say that I do my two at minimum loan closings a day. That puts me at $1,000 a week. On average, I'm doing about, it varies, five to 10 inspections a week. Um, let's just put it at five on the low end. So let's just put it at like, if I do, but now I just got approved to do interior. So interior inspectors pay about 100 bucks. So let's say, I'm gonna, just going to say I probably do two interiors. So let's lowball me and say I'll do two interior and maybe, I don't know, a couple exterior. Let's just say 250 total. So like 1250 and then e-notary, let's say I do two and I just charge them basically 50 bucks a piece. That's an extra $100. So that's 1350 So for the week, I'm set to do on average about 1350 So 1350 for the month, is 5400 so that's me doing two notary two closings a day and an inspection or e-notary each day like one adding on that on so that's about five thousand four hundred dollars with about two hours of work give or take okay i think that's pretty good for part-time now when i don't want to say part-time and full-time but you know what i mean i think the main thing is when you start filling up your schedule so let's say you're getting to like three to five a day, then of course, you know, your, your bottom line is different. So if you're doing, let's say on the high end, let's say you do five closings a day, that's 500 a day times five, that's $2,500 a week times four is 10,000. So that, remember I was saying before, like my, I was making $10,000 a month, that's it. Like it's not hard. I was just doing roughly about five closings a day. So doing five closings a day, Monday through Friday, that's, and it was not always closings. It could be four closings and a private attorney. Could be three closings and two private attorneys, right? But ballpark estimate, it was like, okay, ballpark, I have about five appointments a day that I'm doing. And I'm doing that Monday through Friday. Now, sometimes it's not five. Sometimes it's three, but maybe one paid me 200 bucks. Maybe one paid me 50 bucks. So sometimes the numbers will fluctuate. But if you consistently have about three to five appointments, about five appointments a day. So five notary appointments a day, Monday through Friday, not even counting weekends, you hit that $10,000 a month. And so that's what people say, like, when I say, oh, I made $10,000 a month as a notary public, people say, oh, how you do that? That don't sound right. It does when you break it down like that. All I had to have was roughly five appointments a day. Five appointments a day, Monday through Friday. 
Not to mention if I did Sunday, you know, or Sunday. So it really just boils down to like when you break down the numbers and see like what that has to have. And even so, five appointments a day is still the whole day. It's like five hours. I always say you plan like appointment can be 20 minutes, but I usually count drive time too. So let's just say an hour. So five hours a day, right? Five hours a day, five days a week, $10,000 a month. Stop playing with me, honey. Uh, the the discount code for the courses is lucky. So I put it in the chat. It's lucky. But that's why I say I feel like I'll always be in this space. Like when everyone's like, oh, it's talking all this stuff. It's like, I'm not going anywhere. I'll add on, but I'm not going anywhere. So like I added on real estate. I added on loans this year. But it's like, no, like I've never had a job where I made thousands of dollars a month on my own time, setting my own schedule doing something that was really easy in comparison to other things that I was doing. So like, no, I'm good here. I'm good here. This, I'm good here. Like, I'm good right here, okay?